Are you guys ready for a word? Are you guys excited? I am so excited. I believe that God's got something for me. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, God's got something for you. You better wake up. Wake up. You do not want to miss. You did not come for a nap. You came for the word. And I believe that God's got something for every single one of us. We just need to press in. We need to press in and we need to receive. The cool thing about God is he meets you right where you are. In your situation, whatever you're going through, the word goes forth. And all of us have a different situation going on. And there goes God and the Holy Spirit just ministering to each of our hearts. And I believe that that's going to happen. So get out your notebooks, get at your your what well, your iPhone, your eye pencils and your eyeballs and let's go. Let's get in the word, right? We are on a series called Born for This. Look at your neighbor say you were born for this. You were born for this. God called you for this hour, for this time, for this generation. You are not a mistake. It does not matter if your parents believe for you. It does not matter if your parents did the best by you. It matters that God called you for this time, for this hour, and he's got a plan for your life. Are you ready for his plans? Are you ready for his purpose? Are you ready to change the world? Let's go. Are you ready to break out of this corona rona and be done? It's over over? Let's go. Yes, I believe that God called us for this time and this hour. He didn't bring us before and he didn't save us for later, but he had us right now, right now. And what are we born for? We're born to have a relationship with God, with Jesus, and with the Holy Spirit. We were born to be in a love relationship with the Father. We were born for this. You know what else we were born for? We're born for hard things. We were born to endure long. We were born to overcome pressures. Anybody dealt with some pressures? Anybody had pressures in their lives, right? Pressures on their finances, pressures on their job, pressure in your relationship, pressure with your kids, pressure from your friends, pressure from, pressure from, pressure from, right? Just pressure. Pressure from the weights that you're trying to lift. Pressure. We all have pressure. But can I tell you that we were born to overcome pressures? And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And the fun thing is, because as I'm preparing for the message, as I'm preparing for the message, like I got to receive it and I get so pumped up. Like, whoa, I was born for this. As I'm getting so excited to share the word. So we were born for this, to overcome hard things. Look at your neighbor and say, you were born for this. You got this. We're coming out of this. We're coming out stronger. We're coming out on top, right? Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9, we are pressured in every way, hedged in, but not crushed, perplexed, unsure of finding a way out. Is anybody unsure of finding their way out of this situation, this, this Rona Rona? The world is unsure, but we're not. We're not because we know the end from the beginning. We know that we already have the victory in Christ Jesus, but not driven to despair, hunted down and persecuted, but not deserted to stand alone, struck down, but never destroyed. We are pressured, but not crushed. We are pressured, but not crushed. We were born to win. Why? There we go. That's what I'm talking about. We were born to win. How? Why? Because we live in Jesus and he has already overcome the world. That's how we're born to win. But you know what? We have to learn to set our minds on Jesus. We need to learn to set our minds on things above. We need to learn to not just be looking at what's in front of us, but start walking by faith and seeing that Jesus has already overcome this situation, that he's already seen us through it. Even in hard times, we need to set our minds. Even when it looks like there is no coming back from this situation, we need to set our minds. Have you been there? In a time of, it looks like chaos. It looks like you done lost your job, you done lost your relationship, you done lost your kids, you done lost it all. Can you set your mind on Jesus in that moment? Because the crazy thing is that the devil thinks that the more things he throws at you, that you're going to run away from God. But the crazy thing is that we find and discover God's faithfulness in the hard times. In the hard times, we see God rise up and miracles happen in our lives, in our finances, in our relationships. Miracles, breakout miracles are happening. Open your eyes 
and look to Jesus. He has the way. He is the way. It is so easy to get distracted. Anybody else? It is so easy to get distracted with the tickety tick tock, snappity snap snap, flickety flick flock, whatever you want to call it, whatever's next. You know, I don't know what flickety flock, <laughs> flick flock, that was a weird word. It just slid out of my face. <laughs> but it's like scrolling. And all of a sudden, hours are gone. Why? Because you're bored and you have nothing to do. And then you wonder how come your mind is all over the place. How come you're so distracted? Because you need to put your phone down and look to Jesus. Look outside. Know that there's a plan, that there's a purpose. You just should be looking to the YouTube and start, not just YouTube, but looking to the Love Life Church YouTube, having those messages on repeat. If you're bored, start taking notes. Start casting vision. Start writing things down of what you want to do and where you want to go and who you want to be and who you want to meet. Like, let's start seeing ourselves further. How? When we set our eyes on Jesus. He is our focus, right? Set your mind. Did I already say Paul said in Colossians 3, 2? Set your mind and keep focused continually on the things above, the heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, which have only temporal value. Set your mind on things above. We need to be set our mind and continually focus on those things that are above. Why? Because this stuff that's going down here is temporal. It's gone. Just like that. Like, it's gone. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus. Who are we supposed to be looking into? To Snapchat? To Instagram? To Tickety TikTok? To, to YouTube? To uh, Netflix? To Hulu? And I mean, there's so many streaming. It's ridiculous, right? We, we have, I mean, I didn't even mention TV. Like, regular TV. There's just so much to be distracted to. But we need to be looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. He has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you, look at your neighbor say, lest you, hashu, <laughs> salu, <laughs> lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. We need to set our minds on things above so that we can stop being discouraged in our souls. We need to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, so that our souls can be encouraged and not discouraged. So that we can be empowered and not lost, right? Set your minds on things above so that we will be, just, so that we will be encouraged. You know what? We have hope. His name is Jesus. We have hope in Jesus, and we will not respond the same as those who have no hope. There's people in the midst of this pandemic who have no hope. You want to know why? Because they don't know Jesus. They don't know that he is the healer. They don't know that he has a plan and purpose. But we, we should be responding completely different than the world. Why? Because we have hope. His name is Jesus. We know that he is the author and finisher of our faith. We have fearless faith in Jesus. We have fearless faith in the cross. We have fearless faith that it is finished, that he already, already, already overcome the world, right? And we live and dwell inside of Jesus. We in him. So we have that victory, right? No matter how you feel, look to Jesus. No matter how you feel, remind yourself that you have hope, right? Please don't ask me how I'm feeling. For real. I try not to ask myself how you feeling. Some people ask me how I'm feeling, sometimes I might fall apart <laughs> because it's not about how I feel. It's about what I know. 
And I know that God has a plan. I know that God is the healer. I know that Jesus is the redeemer. I know that it is finished. I know that I don't have to live in lack, that we don't have to live in lack, that we will overcome, that we will make it through, that we, he will see us through, that there is an end, right? And Jesus is the end. So don't ask me how I'm feeling. You know what? When I wake up in the morning, I don't ask myself, do you feel like working out? Because if I ask myself, if I feel like working out, I will roll over and say, no. Facts. Anybody else? Can I get a witness? Can I get an amen? Like every single day, no joke. This, my, whatever this is right here, watch, did he watch, watch? We'll let you know. I wake up and I don't ask myself. I wake up and I tell myself, it's time to work out. It's time to get up and it's time to get it done, right? And then after it's done, I feel so good and I feel so strong and I'm so proud of myself. But if I ask myself if I feel like it, I don't. Sometimes you ask yourself, do you feel like going to church? I don't. Do you ask yourself, do you feel like, you know, being nice to people? I don't. Sometimes you ask, like, if we're going to ask ourselves how we feel about every single thing, we're going to be not good. If we ask ourselves how we feel about everything when I drive, I want to play bumper cars. I want to flick and slap people in the store because they're acting stupid. You know, like I want to sometimes slap myself because I'm acting stupid. But we don't have to be ran by our feelings. We need to take authority over our feelings. Feelings and emotions are a beautiful thing under control. They are a horrible master to serve because they will drive you crazy. Don't ask me how I feel, okay? <laughs> Don, I, I'm trying not to ask myself how I feel. So I was sharing with the interns on Saturday that, the, you know what? The struggle of failure is real. You know, the struggle of being broke, that's a real thing. Anybody, can, can I get an amen? The struggle is real. Well, that amen was too loud. <laughs> that amen just got real. So the struggle is real, right? The struggle of failure is real. But I was also reminding them that the stress of success is real. They're both pressures. They're both pushing on you. But it's how you respond and how you react. People think when you finally make it, you know, everything's going to be perfect. No, there's stress with success as well. But you learn and you learn how to deal with it. You learn to look to Jesus. You learn to look to his word. You learn that you have a different response, that success is from God and that Jesus already had the victory. And when we learn to set our mind on things above, God has a greater plan, right? So we need to look to Jesus so that we can learn how to overcome. Jesus said in John 16, 33, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, troubles, pressures, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. What did he say? He said, in the world you might have. No. In the world you will have. In the world, you will have tribulations, troubles, pressures, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And last week, we looked at what good cheer meant. It's not cheers. You know, everybody salute. Everybody say cheers with your glass of water. That was a joke. Everybody calm down. With your glass of grape juice, your glass of sparkling cider, it's not cheers. God's not, Jesus is not saying, say cheers because I've overcome the world. He's saying, be filled with strength and power. Confident courage. Why? Because I've overcome the world. We have to learn to set our mind and keep it set on Jesus. Why? Because he's the author and finisher. He knows the end from the beginning. And we are in Christ Jesus. When we receive Jesus... We've been born again. We have a new identity and it's in Christ Jesus. So you're, you know what? It's all about a new identity. There's an identity crisis going on. You want to know why there's an identity crisis going on? Because the world doesn't know Jesus. When you know Jesus, 
you have a new identity in him, right? In him, in him, we were born for this. In him, you were born for this. And in him, you were born to win. You were born to win. Romans 8, 37. This is the Amplified. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That's how we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. How can we be more than conquerors? Because nothing can separate us from the love of God. It doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter what the enemy throws at us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's how we are more than conquerors. We more than have the victory. Why? Because we have love. We have love and love conquers all, overcomes all. We are more than conquerors in the midst of pain. Remind yourself, I am more than a conqueror. In the midst of loss, Remind yourself, I am more than a conqueror. In the midst of sickness and disease, remind yourself, I am more than a conqueror. In the midst of financial trouble, remind yourself, I am more than a conqueror. What's more than a conqueror means that nothing will ever separate me from the love of God. And because of that, I have hope. I have hope that I will make it through this. This is not the end of my story. This is just the middle. And don't ever forget that. Remind yourself, look at your neighbor say, this ain't the end. It's just the middle. Don't give up in the middle. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, why don't you just meet me in the middle? <laughs> because I'm crying just a little. Because <laughs> why don't you just meet me in the middle? Jesus is like, I already, the middle and the end, come on girl, <laughs> make it through. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go right? Being more than conquerors is because we know the end. We know the end. And the end is that we have victory. We have already won the battle in Christ Jesus. God is working this out together for our good. He's bringing it all together for our good. We may not like the breakthroughs or the go-throughs, but we know in the end, breakout is coming. We may not like the breakthroughs and the go-throughs, but we know in the end, breakout is coming. Breakout is here. Breakout is now. Are you ready? Can you trust God? Do you believe? Do not fear. Only believe. Only believe that God has a plan. Only believe that God can turn this around for your good. Working it together for your good, right? Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And it doesn't matter what the enemy sends our way. It doesn't matter what sickness, what disease, what financial trouble, what relational trouble. It does not matter what the enemy sends our way, right? Because we know that all things are possible with God. Do you believe it? I believe it. In Mark 9, 23, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Mark 10, 27, but Jesus looked at them and said, with men, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Sometimes life hits us with hard things and hard times and hard pressures, right? Pain, lack, loss, sickness, despair. But with God, all things are possible. To those who believe, all things are possible. That's how we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. We've already overcome in Christ Jesus. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives and dwells inside of you and inside of me. What shall we fear? 
What can man do to me? Nothing. Why? Because nothing can separate me from the love of God. That's how we can be more than conquerors. That's how we're going to overcome. And that's how we keep hope. Because we set our mind on things above. We look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, right? Romans 8, 11. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Anybody's mortal body need life? His spirit lives in you. Like that is so powerful if we could actually understand that. Our mortal bodies need life. His spirit lives in you. That same power that rose Christ from the dead dwells in you. Sometimes we got to go through hard things, but we don't want to go through it. Anybody else want to go around it? Anybody like, where's the elevator? Where's the escalator? Where's the something, you know, where's the bus? Where's the train? Where's the helicopter? And God's saying, can you go through? We need to go through. Why? Because he has a plan for you on the other side. He has a plan for you, world changer, on the other side. Because you're going to change the world with your story and with your breakthrough and with your breakout. And the world is crying out, will somebody show us through? Not around, not under, but through. Through hard times, through hard things, right? The good news is that we can go through this and come out stronger. We can come out wiser and we can come out closer to God. Whatever you're going through right now, you're going to make it through. Whatever you are going through right now, you're going to make it through. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to make it through. You're going to make it through. Breakout is about to happen. It's just around the corner. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Don't lose focus, but set your mind on Jesus, right? You're going to make it through to the other side. Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. For at the right time, you will reap if you do not give in, give up, and lose heart. You'll reap. Don't give in at just the right time. At just the right time, can you trust God's timing? Can you trust God's timing? I can't. And I'm learning to trust his timing and trust his word, right? And when you come out on the other side, no matter what the enemy threw at you, you know what you're going to come out with? The victory. You're going to come out with experience, more experience of God's love, of God's grace, of his mercy, of his faithfulness, right? You're going to come out stronger, wiser, and closer to God. Anybody ready for stronger? Anybody ready for wiser? Anybody ready to be closer? You know, once I think I'm close to God, it's crazy how closer I can get to him and his word and his love and his mercy and his grace, right? Life doesn't get any easier. You get stronger. You get stronger in the experience of God's love. You get stronger in his grace. You get stronger in his mercy. You get stronger in his faithfulness. He is faithful to every single one of us. He is the faithful God. We just got to trust his faithfulness, right? 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now thanks be to God who always, look at your neighbor say always, every time, all day, every day, leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place that we go. You know what that fragrance is? Because everywhere that we go, he's leading us into triumph. And everywhere we go, we're spreading the good news that Jesus is alive, that God is able, that God made a way, that he's doing miracles right now, right here, in this time, in this generation, in this church, in this city, in this state, in our nation. God God is healing this nation. We are experiencing miracles. And everywhere we go, there's a fragrance 
of his knowledge. There's a fragrance that Jesus is alive. And there's a fragrance of what's different about you? Like, oh, it's summer and you need some deodorant. No, not that fragrance. Not that fragrance. Not that musty stuff. The fragrance of why are you so different? The same thing is happening to me, but why do you look different, act different, walk different, and talk different? What's that fragrance? What is it that you have? It's called Jesus. It's called hope, mercy, favor. Thanks be to God. When we listen to God, set our minds on Jesus, and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, we win every time. That's why it's important that we come to church, not to please God. He's already well pleased with you. It's to grow up and to learn who God is and that he has a plan and he has a purpose for your life, right? Whatever you're going through right now, take a breath. You're going to make it through. You're going to make it through to the other side. Why? Because God's done it for me and he'll do it for you. And God's done it for her and him and him and her and them and thousands and millions and trillions. God's done it. And he'll do it again. And he'll do it again. And he'll do it again. And he'll do it again because he is faithful. He is a good God. And he has a plan for your life. And it's to get through and to come out and to have breakthrough and break out. Say it. I am going to make it through this. I'm coming through to the other side. I'm breaking through and breaking out. I will not be destroyed in the middle. I will not grow weary, bitter, or resentful. Come on. I will not blame God. We're coming through. We're breaking out. Why? Because God has a plan. And we're not going to question his plan. We're not going to question God. We're not going to blame God. We're not going to get bitter. We're not going to get weary. Why? Because we know that we will not lose hope. That we will not lose heart. Because in due season, at just the right time, God is there. God is able. It is impossible with men. But all things are possible with God. To those who believe, and we believe, that God is good. That he is able, that he is willing, that he already has a plan, that he has the answer. We just need to listen. We need to ask him to help us. He has the answer. We all have a choice to make. Are we going to quit? Are we going to give up? Are we going to give in? Are we going to press in? Are we going to press in? You know, when we get, the only reason we get mad at God is because when we think he responded differently than he should have. You know what? We had a plan and God, you know, you didn't make it happen. Like God, some girls be like, that was my man, God. How come you did not make it happen? I believe. No, I believe I can fly. No, you can't unless you're in a plane. I mean, in your dreams, in my dreams, I can fly. Guys, when I dream, you want to know how I fly? Since I was a kid, and I still to this day, it's always two, one, two, and I'm up. And then once I'm up, it's only two, two. It's just like, whoo, whoo, and then I'm up. And then once I'm up, it's just two, whoo, whoo. There you go. Whoo, whoo. I love to fly in my dreams. It's, it's really fun. I'm a huge dreamer, too. That was for free. That was just free information. I don't know, right? It's because we just, we're making up stuff. And we're like, God, I should fly. And he's like, I created the plane. <laughs> Come on, right? So we cannot dictate to God. We don't tell God what to do. It's not how it works. You can try and try. It don't work for me and it's not gonna work for you. <laughs> we don't dictate to God, but we do trust God, right? Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your past. Direct your past. Never blame God. We're gonna have hard things happen. That's life. That's life in this fallen world, right? That's, things happen. Jesus even told us we're gonna have tribulations. We're gonna have troubles. We're gonna have hard times. <laughs> Did you not believe him? <laughs> That's what he says. But don't worry because I've overcome the world. Can you trust me? Right? We are not promised no pressures. 
were actually promised we will have them, right? He's like, you will have troubles. But don't worry because I've overcome the world. As believers, we just don't have to go through them alone, right? The world has pressures. We have pressures. But we don't go through them alone. We go through them with the same power that raised Christ from the dead. We go through them with hope and love, right? Let God work it out together for your good. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Not everything in my life has been good, but when you put it all together, it's worked out for my good. Not everything in life has been good. But when you put it all together and you mix it up with God's love and God's grace, it all worked out for my good. Can you see it in your life too, right? Because we love God and we're called according to his purposes. I wouldn't change anything that's happened in my life. I wouldn't change a thing because along the way I met Jesus. And when I met him, I could see him all along the way, guiding me calling me, leading me, directing me, saving me, protecting me. Sometimes it's only like when we met Jesus this fun, but it's crazy that when we look that way, we can see him all along the way. I wouldn't change a thing. Why? Because I met Jesus, right? And God can use your mess and turn it into a message. God can use all that hot mess. Everybody's like, woo! God can use that. Even what you, you're thinking of right now, that, that thing, like, no, 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 God can't use that. God can use that. Why? Because you know how many other people need set free from that same thing? Do you know how many other people are struggling with the same thing that you're struggling with and they need help out? God can use it, right? We're gonna have pressures. It's just how we handle them makes, it or makes us or breaks us. One of the greatest testimonies to the world is that if we're going through the same situation and you look different. And they're like, why? Why do you look different, right? The devil can try to set a trap for us, but when we come through and we're closer to God, when we come through those hard traps and we love God and we love people and we love life, the devil can't understand. He's like, I don't throw this at them and that sickness and that financial trouble and that relational hardship and this and that. And you're like, loving God, loving people, loving life. Like, is that all you got, sucker? Because you don't mess with the wrong girl. You don't mess with the wrong family. You don't knocked on the wrong door because we know Jesus. We know the end from the beginning. We know who we are in Christ. And we're about to set this world on fire for who they are in Christ, right? Yes, greater, stronger, wiser, and closer to God. What the devil thought would take us out only drew us closer to God. Because why? We look to Jesus. We set our mind on things above, right? Second Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. The crazy thing with all this different sickness and disease that the devil has thrown at me, I feel like he put pressure on my life, but I don't care because he only threw me in the pressure cookier, cooker. Anybody know what a pressure cooker is? It's like you could cook a thing of meat like fast. You put it in the crock pot, it's like six hours later, still needs two more hours. What is that? I don't want no crock pot life. Bring on the pressure, devil. Come on, you just throw me in the pressure cooker. I'm like, faster, stronger, wiser, closer, let's go. Is that all you got? You done mess with the wrong girl. You done knocked in the wrong house. Why? Because we know God. And we know that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And that's how we are more than conquerors, right? Okay, and, and all of that pressure just made me realize how faithful God is. He's faithful in the hard times. He's faithful in the good times. Okay, oh, I'm running out of time, but who cares? I have this really cool story, okay? In Daniel chapter three, 
okay? Daniel chapter 3. I'm going to try to like read through it and kind of like summarize it, but this is bomb, guys. Wake up. God's got something for you right here. Talk about pressure cooker. Daniel chapter 3, okay? King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonia takes Daniel and other Hebrew youth. He takes them captive so he can train them. He's taking the youth. He's taking the young guns. Why? He's taking L-L-Y-A. He's taking the young people. Why? Because he knows he can use, use the young. He wants to train the strong and healthy, right? Okay, three of the men were named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, aka Rack, Shack, and Benny. Look at your neighbor say, Rack, Shack, and Benny. Okay, King Nebuchadnezzar, he built this large uh, gold image and he decreed that everybody must bow and worship this image, okay? They must worship this image. You play the flute, da 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 da. And if you don't bow and you don't worship this image, you're going to go into the, fir- the fiery furnace. Whoo, like we think it's hot out here. This ain't no fiery furnace, okay? Feels like it sometimes, right? So everyone obeys the decree and they're like, oh king, live forever. And they're worshiping it. Okay, so the king finds out that there's certain Jews that he's given them authority, Rack, Shack, and Benny, right? He's given them some authority and they won't bow. They ain't having it. They ain't worshiping that gold thing. They're like, nah, we ain't worshiping the Rona. We ain't worshiping the TV. We ain't, oh, maybe we are. Whoop. We ain't worshiping that idol. So Rack, Shack, and Benny tell the king, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. He's like, what did you say? All the other people say, Oh, king, yes, king. They're like, oh, no, we ain't got, no, we don't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So if you throw us in the fiery furnace, our God, who we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. He will deliver us from your hand. O king. But if not, even if he didn't, but we know that he will, we will not bow. I love that part. This health battle that I have been in has been more than 10 years. And the enemy keeps throwing things at my door. And I tell him every time, I don't care what you throw at me. I will never bow to sickness and disease. I will never bow from turning and worshiping God, the one true God, because I know that he is the healer. I know that he is faithful. And I love how they're like, even if he didn't, I won't bow. I'm like, I know I'm healed. And even if I'm not, I will never bow. I will never give in. I will never give up. Oh, I love this, right? So they're like, let it be known, O king, that we will not serve your God and we will not worship the gold image which you have set up. Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury. He's like, get those suckers right now. Come on. And he's like, turn up the furnace seven times hotter. He wanted them to burn. He wanted them to just turn to ashes. So he tells them, turn it up, turn it up, turn up the heat. So he spoke and commanded the heat furnace to be uh, seven times hotter than it is usually. They threw them in with their clothes on and everything. And they cast them into the midst of the burning furnace. The furnace was exceedingly hot that the flames of the fire killed the men that took them to throw them in. Those guys dead because it's like, roar, right? Anybody's situation been roaring at you, right? Any lack, any pain, any disease been roaring at you? Come on. But we ain't bowing. We ain't giving up. We ain't giving in because we know that God is faithful. We know that God is with us, right? So the furnace was exceedingly hot that the flames of the fire killed those who took up Rack, Shack, and Benny. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they, yes, they answered him, Yes, true, O king, three, we did. Look, he answered, I see four guys up in there walking around in the fire, and they're not even hurt. 
and the form of the fourth one looks like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar starts praising God. And he went near the burning uh, fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out of there right now. Come here. Stop playing around in the fiery furnace with Jesus and get out here. Then Rak, Shek, and Benny, they came out of the midst of the fire, and all the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men whose bodies that the fire had no power, whose bodies that the sickness had no power, whose homes, right, that the financial trouble had no power, whose relationship, that, that the relationship trouble had no power, right? It has no power with men, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. And they're in amazement. All the counselors are there. And they're, they're shocked that, those, that there was no, the fire had no power. Their hair on their head was not even singed. And their garments were not affected even by the smell of smoke. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, blessed be their God. <laughs> blessed be their God. Because you know what? No other God would respond that way. He said, their God sent an angel, an angel delivered out of them. He, because his servants, they trusted him and they frustrated the king's word and they yielded their bodies that they should not serve or worship any other God. They said, we will not bow. We will not give in. We will not give in. Right? So then Nebuchadnezzar spoke a blessing. He said, Bless me, Shadrach, uh, Shadrach, and Benny. <laughs> right? So, therefore, I decree, him and his decrees. Here we go. Here's another decree. That any people, nation, or language which speak anything against the God of Rack, Shack, and Benny will be cut into pieces and their houses shall be made a heap of ashes because there is no other God who can deliver like their God. Then the king promoted them, promoted them to be an authority in Babylon. Talk about some pressure. I've never had pressure to be thrown into a fiery furnace, ever. And I don't plan on it, ever. (laughs) But they trusted God. They trusted God that he was going to come through for them. They trusted in God anyway. Romans 12, 21 says, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Because God has a plan. When you have pressures, don't let it conquer you. Conquer it with good. Conquer it with doing good. When you have pressure, run to the house of God. When you have pressure, what can you do for others? And the moment you start making it about others, God makes it about you. Do the right thing because it's the right thing. Do the right thing because it's the right thing. And when you go through hard things, ask God, Help me do this right. Like, I'm serious. In the midst of trouble, ask God, help me do this right. Help me to represent you right. Help me do this right. Not why. Why, why, why? When we ask God, why? Why did this happen? Why do bad things happen to good people? Why is this? And why is that? And you know what that creates? Confusion. And you know what? Even if you know why, sometimes you don't even like why. Sometimes we don't even like the answer. And they're like, why did so-and-so do that? And then you find out why, and you're like, ew. Ooh, I can't believe they did that. Something's wrong with them. You don't need to know why. We, like, we, we think we want to know why. But you know what? We don't need to know why. We just need to trust God and walk in faith and have fearless faith that God is good and God is able, right? We may never understand the why, but trust will always require some unanswered questions. But God, I trust you anyway. I may not understand right now, but I trust you anyway. There's evil in this world, right? 
There's evil in this world. There's the sin nature, the devil, his powers, his forces. There's just stupidity. <laughs> Anybody account for that? You just dumb. There's pollution, toxins, all kinds of cramp chemicals. There's all kinds of crazy things. There's evil things in this world. We don't always understand why. Why it happened. Why it came to my family. Why did it happen to good people? Can we trust God anyway? I'm going to trust God anyway. I'm going to walk in faith anyway. And, and I'm going to ask God, help me do this right. Help me not to blame you. Help me not to ask why. But help me represent you. Help me represent you. Right? Love God anyway, even though we don't understand the why. God has a plan for your life. And he'll take it all and work it together for your good. The good, the not so good, and the great, the not so great. And there's God working it together for your good, for my good, for our good, because we were born for this. World changer, you're born for this. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. You are born to be loved by God. You are born to walk in fearless faith. You are born to overcome the world, and you are born to change the world. Can you trust God? Can you trust God? The Lord is on our side. Whom shall we fear? No one and nothing, right? This is our breakout year. But we got to trust God through the breakthrough until the breakout. Amen? Amen. Anybody, anybody receive something tonight? Yes. Anybody want, you know, you're like, that sounds awesome and that sounds great. But what does that mean for me? Because I don't know if I'm a part of the family of God. I I want that power. I want to walk in that power, love, and a sound mind. You know what? God wants you to, and it's so easy. We make it complicated. You know what? God's love is a free gift. It's not for sale. You can't buy it, and you can't earn it. It's given, and God freely gives you his love, and he has a plan for you. All you have to say is, Jesus, I believe in you, and you enter into the family of God. And well, I want to give you an opportunity, if you've never called in the name of Jesus, to call in the name of Jesus. Let's say it together. Say, Jesus, I call in your name right now. I ask you to save me, set me free, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. And just like that, you're in the family of God. And just like that, you're born again. So awesome, right? And you know what? We would love to celebrate with you. If you receive Jesus for the first time tonight, please raise your hand. Please click that I received Jesus button. We'd love to connect with you and get you some resources. Pastor Dan wrote an amazing book because it's not just about getting to heaven. It's also about living heaven on earth. There's so much more to salvation than just your ticket to heaven. Let's live heaven on earth. So we'd love to get that resource to you. Please just comment and let us know. Our that connect card so we could get you that resource. I love you guys. I am so proud of every single one of you guys.